squad welcome back now today we're going to be doing some sampling and the sample i'll be using today is from a well-known artist who sadly isn't around anymore of course i won't be playing the sample in its original form to avoid a youtube strike but i'm going to give you guys the opportunity to figure out the artist and the song and you can put your ideas in the comment section of this video also i'm going to be making a full length in-depth version of this particular process which i'll be uploading to my brand new youtube members area that will be coming real soon so i'll let you know when you'll be be able to join anyway as always if you feel i'm bringing you value like the video subscribe to the channel leave me a comment and hit me up with a super thanks if you think this is worthwhile and you want me to continue to bring you quality videos anyway it's that time so let's get into it okay so i've recorded the first 25 or so seconds of this particular song and it's just the intro of the song before it goes into the first verse right here we've got a section of guitar which i'm going to be using up to there and from this point where the song drops in up to about 22 seconds i'm going to be splicing that because that's the end of the first eight bars and then i'm going to be using logic's bpm counter to analyze the tempo of the song and then set the host tempo to whatever the tempo of the song is and then we can get started so let's do that and then we'll move on so we're keeping this first guitar section which we're going to be using later on now let's analyze the tempo of this eight bar section and make sure it loops properly and cleanly in logic Okay, let's go for 96.7. Okay, and now let's see how that loops. So we need to slow it down a little bit. Once you know you've got a solid eight bar chunk of music, I play the last bar of music and listen to how cleanly it loops round. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Let's bring it down to 95. Yeah, that's nice. Perfect. So although Logic's analysis was 96.7, by following this little adjustment process, you can get it bang on. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce this sample in place and let's go. Now let's do the same for the guitars. Let's make sure the guitars are sounding right. Now one thing I noticed about the guitar was it was played more freestyle, not really to a click. I need to make sure this section of music is gonna be in time. So I'm gonna play back the guitar in isolation and then count the number of beats in that section. So there's four beats in that section, which means it's just one bar, four beats in a bar. Now to get this nice and tight and in time with the host, all we need to do is come down to the bottom here, hover over this corner, hold down the option or alt key and pull this back. So it lines up at bar two. Now, if I was to put a, this, a loop on this, listen, listen. Perfect. Okay, let's repeat this a few times. Okay, and let's hear that over the top of this. Already we're cooking. Okay, so before we move on, we're gonna bounce in place this new guitar section. So let's go bounce in place. Okay, we can now get rid of these. All right, so let's move on to the next section. Now, we're gonna come down here, grab our main loop, and we are going to pull it over so, and drop it onto Quick Sampler Optimized. And now, here we've got Logic's Wonder Machine, the Quick Sampler. Make sure you do check out my other videos on Logic's sampling tools. Logic is jam-packed with some amazing sampling tools and features, and you should definitely be delving into those. What we're gonna do right now, 
is come over here and select beat divisions and i'm going to reduce this to half note divisions now this eight bar sample is divided up into slices so now i can trigger slices at different sections And that's the beauty of these tools in Logic. You're able to do so many things so quickly when it comes to sampling. So next thing I'm gonna do is figure out which slices I wanna use in my production, then trigger them in and record them as MIDI. Okay, so I'll be messing around with some of these slices and I put down the little keyboard section. However, what I found is the tuning of the sample itself, the original recording is slightly out of key or, or pitch with my piano. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Pitch this down by, by minus 50 cents, and I'm gonna drop this by one semitone, which is now, I've already checked it, and that's now gonna be in tune with what I'm gonna be playing over the top. So here's the first little pattern I'm gonna put down in terms of building up the layers using these samples. So, okay, let's record that. Okay, so now we've got that first little pattern going on. I wanna put down a simple drum groove to get things pumping, and then we'll keep adding layers on top. So let's go. Let's quantize that. And of course, I've quantized this already. And let's move on to the next section. So now I wanna go through and find some more slices that I can create more patterns and add more layers to this production. So let me go away, work on that, and then I'll record a section, and then I'll play back the pattern that I've come up with. Of course, I'm gonna to have to duplicate this quick sampler track. So let's see what I can come up with, and then I'll play that back to you. Okay, so here's my second sample section. Have a listen. Okay, so what's going on here? I've added a tape delay to the channel, so let's mute that. Bring it back in. Okay, the other thing I've done um, in this sample is I've switched on the filter and I'm using a low pass filter. I've also switched the polyphony to mono and I've added a little bit of resonance and drive to this section. Again, I like to mess with this just to kind of see what comes up in terms of the tone of the sample. So the next thing I'm gonna look at is this guitar section right here. Let's see what we can come up with that and I'll add that in and then we'll move on. Okay, so for the guitar section, this is what I've done. Instead of pulling the guitar sample into the quick sampler, I've decided to chop it up and create something more interesting out here in the main logic window. So have a listen to what I've come up with. There's some other bits I'm gonna show you straight afterwards that's on the actual guitar channel strip, but listen to how the guitar sits with the foundation stuff that I've already got going on. Okay, cool. I have a look at the strength of signal on these two channels on the guitar recording. You can see one channel has got more energy than the other. I want the guitar signal to be more evenly spread across both channels. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna pull up Logic's direction mixer, and um, which is under imaging. I've pushed the signal a bit more to the right channel to kind of even things out a bit. So let's have a look and see how that is working. That's better. This is without. 
I'm also using a low cut filter to take out some of the bottom end of the guitar. I want to leave that space for the kick and the bass and the lower toned instruments. So let's have a listen. Okay, so I'm scooping out some of the bottom end. And the other thing I'm doing as well is I'm using this really fantastic plugin um, by Waves. It's called the Waves CLA Guitars. And I'm really having a lot of fun with this. You know, you've got a ton of presets that you can mess around with, but it's so quick and easy to come up with really interesting tones and colors. Let's have a listen to what it's doing to these guitars. really making them guitars cut through. They're not gonna be a main feature in the production, but they can definitely be heard in a supporting role. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna go away, finish off adding my samples, then I wanna add a piano section, a bass line, and then mix, and it's a wrap, okay? So let me go away and add those few extra bits. So I've added all of the key elements to this production. And now I'm gonna play out with a bass line. And what you're gonna hear is a mixed down version of the production so far. Now the point of the video is to show you how simple and effective sampling can be in drawing from other people's great productions, using sections from that and building something fresh over the top, using those samples as key underlying elements to build something really new. And hopefully that's made sense to you. And by now you've figured out where the original sample comes from. Remember to give your thoughts in the comment section as to who you think the artist is. And I'm gonna be doing more of these to test your knowledge and as well to explore more and more of these sampling techniques in Logic. Like I said, I'm putting a baseline over the top and I'm gonna be using uh, the Waves CLA bass plugin, which I've used before, and the link it will be in the description. And all I'm using is the default preset of this plugin, and it instantly adds life to my bass line. So it's definitely one to check out. Finally, on my master bus, I've got the Waves Abbey Road vinyl plugin, which is gonna dirty this thing up, give it a bit of grit and punch, okay? I'm gonna be doing some more videos on this particular plugin just to show you exactly what it can do. Anyway, let's lay down this bass line and play out. Until next time, I'm Deuce, I'm out, peace.